This ain't no virus or a chemical attack. It is real evil. If you see it, it takes on the form of your worst fears. Every contact we have had with the outside has brought us death. And welcome to another edition of the Sub Beacon, sponsored by Calm, the number one app for sleep, meditation, and relaxation. I'm Victor Manis, along with Sunny Bunch and Jonathan V. Last. I'd like to remind you the Sub Beacon is available on iTunes and Google Play. Just look at our podcast and search for Sub Beacon. You'll easily find us. Please subscribe, tell your friends, and leave a review. Gentlemen, how are we? Sonny, how, uh, how is Morning Joe? Uh, it was fun. It was fun. Tell us about it. There's not really much to say. I mean, TV is weird. I don't really like doing TV um, unless I'm Which going... Which is a shame because they're so handsome. Yeah, well, uh, th- we'll get to that. Uh, the 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 only time I really like doing TV is when I actually get to talk about movies or something like general punditry. Is and then you I'm feel just not very I'm not very good at it. It's not why it's not what yeah. I what I what I make my money doing. So, uh, but it was fun. It was. I mean, it's weird. It's TV, uh, and it, it, I was remote. I was in DC. They're, so you're not in, at, they're in New York. You're not looking at Joe and Mika, right? I'm looking into a. I'm staring into a camera. Mm-hmm. But as as in all these setups, there's a there's like a monitor below. So basically, um, I am I'm staring. In, I'm I'm I have like a death stare into the camera, uh, and I'm willing myself. I'm like constantly willing myself not to have my eyes dart down. You know, and like you look at look at the to, monitor. You should. Tell I could them tell them to turn, turn it off. I usually I do. I almost always tell them to turn it off when I have a when I have a remote yeah. like this. But the problem the problem with Morning Joe is that there are so many different things going on. There's so many different people talking, and they're kicking it to different people. I actually like to have some sense of what is actually happening on the screen while I'm while I'm talking. Um, and they were also showing like clips of the movie and stuff. So I wanted I, I like actually yeah, you don't want to talk I, that. Uh, ninety per, almost always I have them turn the monitor oh, off. Fair mm-hmm. enough. But on this on this on this one one instance i didn't i didn't want to uh, but it's fun i mean joe and mika were very nice uh and we you uh, saw the were, photoshop right uh, i saw the photoshop <laughs> afterwards i saw uh, me and the, the palpatine, palpatine gear. uh no i it, some people were surprised i wore the imperial lapel pin uh on on uh, the show but if i'm going on tv to talk about dick cheney i'm not not going to wear Where the empire the empire paraphernalia I, that I, 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 I also couldn't help notice how nicely coiffed your hair was it was so Oof. sculpted tell well, us about that so, well i my, my problem right now is that i need a haircut and i've needed a haircut for about the last month oh man yeah, yeah. and uh You're flopping everywhere. and it's it's a it's a real it's a real issue to the point that i like so the the top you know you can i can get that down that's fine but the back is still like flipping up a little bit like i got a mullet there was back mullet there. action it's not it's There's not mullet action it's it's not it's not really a mullet because it's a party all over there's no business there's no business <laughs> up front it's just a it's just a wild mess but I, so I'm like, you know, they, you sit down, they do makeup and hair and stuff. And the one thing I asked the, the nice lady who was doing my uh, makeup, I was like, can you make it so I don't look like I have a mullet on TV? Because that would be, that would be really nice for me. What did she and say? She, she was like, yeah, we'll, we'll get that. And so she got out some like industrial strength hair glue and was like, mm. <laughs> getting her hands all ready. Shawak. And then she, she, you know, she, she, she starts mus- like rubbing it into the back of my hair and she pulls out like a horse brush. <laughs> and it's like we're gonna we're gonna get that down. We and then uh, and then the the hair dryer came out to like glue it into place. You know, so the hair dryer set at like how long did you degrees. spend in makeup? Oh, not long. Be I mean, honest. like uh, like three minutes. <laughs> what? No, maybe, maybe five minutes. And no, I like I because they, they they do like a very. I mean, I'm a guy. I mean, so with the hair. Like, I mean, the whole. Yeah, if, with for the whole thing, like five minutes. She just slacked. She just shellacked it. Just wow. slathered it on. Um, did you want to keep it that way for the rest of the day? Well, I mean, I, I didn't have much choice. It was <laughs> don't it was, touch the hair. It was it was just hair. like that. Right, yeah. Till okay. I took a shower. <laughs> did you think about just maybe just pulling it into a ponytail? It's not here. quite long enough to do that. Eighties ponytail. I could have bobby pinned it down. Oh. I could if she had, if she had some bobby pins in there. I'm sure she did. I could have been like, hey, can you just pin it down? You know what you could do? Do you remember Chris, Get a haircut? When Chris Jericho rocked the like the Bam Bam, <laughs> yeah, like top pony, the top knot, the top. Is that what it is? The top knot. Yeah, you have yeah. enough to do that. Yeah, uh, it's pretty close. I could probably just about do a top knot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not a man bun, but a top knot. 
Well, man buns and top knots are mm. the same genus, Cousins. I think. Mm. Cousins. They're like Cousins. they're on the they're in the phylum. But uh, yeah. uh, Sony, something else was on your mind. You said uh, that was in. I saw it on Variety. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, Jason Reitman taking over the Ghostbusters franchise. I find this interesting for a whole bunch of reasons. First off, father son. First off, there's the father son angle. He he tweeted something like, "They're giving me the keys to the car," which is like kind of weirdly. Like I like Jason Reitman a lot, and I, if I say things that are bad about Jason Reitman on this on this segment, it's purely out of love. A little bit douchey, <laughs> little bit, little bit nepotistic, no. and do, but he like, doesn't need to. Is either. it a franchise? No, I mean, well, the, the Ghost, the, Ghost, the, Ghost we can, I guess we Ghostbusters one and two franchise. Ghostbusters. So this is supposedly picking up sometime after Ghostbusters two. Right. It is taking place in a separate universe from the Lady Ghostbusters. From Lady Ghostbusters, uh, they are they are deep sixing that terrible idea um wow. and, like the animated film that they had planned and like they they i mean sony really crapped the bed with the paul Feig ghostbusters um so uh, leaving aside the i think i think jason reitman's sensibility is actually much better for this sort of movie than paul Feig's, who is who uh has a lot of strengths as a director but um he has also a reliance on like kind of weird, gross body humor, which I don't like. Uh, Bridesmaids, kind yeah, of thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I or or uh, spy the like. Anytime he's with Melissa McCarthy, they they do like weird. Like mm-hmm. I mean, like Ghostbusters had a series of queef jokes. <laughs> like I mean, hey, come on, shouldn't every movie? So, uh, I so I, I do think movie. I do think Jason Reitman's right. sensibility is a little better in that sense. But he has the same problem where he hasn't really done any like big you know, special effects heavy sort of movies. But also, I mean, look, just the simple fact of the matter is that like Jason Reitman is one of our few interesting middle brow directors. I mean, and I say middle brow like the, uh, in not, not, not the negatively. Good poo-poo. No, no, no good like it, it's a, it's a, it, he, he has, he makes movies about ideas and they are, uh, they're usually very well done and they're interesting. And I am a little bit, I mean, if this is what he needs to do to stay out of movie director jail, which he probably does since both the front runner and Tully came out this year and neither grossed uh, anything close to their budgets. Um, fine. But I would, I would hate to see him get trapped in franchise director hell. Right. Right. Okay. JBL, do you have any thoughts on Jason Reitman? I know you're a fan of Jason I Reitman, too. I love Jason Reitman. Yeah. I think he's great. I, Me too. My concern isn't about special effects. It's actually about the broadness of comedy because I think he's a very funny director. Mm-hmm. But I worry that his brand of comedy will not be what Ghostbusters audiences expect. But see, I think I think it I think because it's is, for me. I mean, his, he makes movies that are funny for you and me. But it, go back and watch Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is a very quietly, subtly funny movie. I mean, I there's, there is a lot of very there's, little. There's funny a lot stuff. of like. There's a lot yeah, of. I mean, and, and a lot of that's driven by you know kind of Bill Murray's random looks at the screen or whatever. So like, who knows how much of that. You can translate with a new cast or whatever, but I do think that that is a it's a it, it the the Ghostbusters is not a movie that looks funny on paper. It's like here's some here's some dudes who are out you know catching ghosts. They got a small business. They got fired from their college, and like and none of that actually sounds funny. But it is a deeply deeply funny movie. It's hilarious. I want a Jason Reitman superhero movie. There, you I would sit like, with that. I, 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 <sighs> yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Or in in the um, like Jason Reitman directs the Kitty Pride movie, but it's kind of a comedy, but a subtle comedy. <laughs> sure, right? Good. Yeah, it'd be with, fantastic. With like, uh, you could make, just make Jason Bateman play Kitty Pride. Jason Bateman. Yeah, just ba- just have Jason Bateman play the fifteen year old girl. You know, you could. It'd be very dry and subtle comedy. Is Kitty Pride Sprite? Is she what Sprite? What are you talking? Are you, are you having a stroke? <laughs> no. Isn't there another X Men superhero named Sprite? Kitty Pride's name is Kitty Pride. She doesn't have Who's a Sprite. They, they, I don't know that there is a Sprite. Oh, we got to look into that. Shadow one. Cat is there is a, there's no, a brief moment where she gets there's a superhero a named there's, Shadow Cat, no, but sprite. it's all she's always just Kitty help me Pride. out, Sonny. You're name. looking for Sprite. There's a there's a Ja Jing. Oh. Who, uh, let's see. When, <laughs> uh, I believe that, that sound you just made, Victorino, was problematic. Um, and her, she, she has the code name Sprite. Mm. Uh, mm. Something, something to do, I don't know. This, she's, mm-hmm. But I, I, don't, I, I don't understand. That sounds what, anime. This is, it, well, she's, she's like Chinese or something. Oh. I don't know. It, it's weird. Okay. I, I, You're I don't thinking know of the girl is. who flashes the lights. Are you thinking of Jubilee? Jubilee. No, That's who maybe. you're thinking of. I don't know. I thought her name was Sprite. I want a Jason Reitman Kitty Pride movie. 
it's set up in Westchester where she grows up because she's like a rich girl. She's a rich Jewish girl from the New York suburbs. Wait, It'd hold be on. Fantastic. Hold on. Sunny. Sprite was the first code name of the X Man Kitty Pride. Ha! Take that! Wow! I did it for once! I'm raising my arms. You can't see it, but I'm raising. I can't believe I outnerded you for Hold once. On. I'm. I. It's. It's. I, this is true. This is from the Marvel database. I don't know. <laughs> it's some sort of wiki page. I can't. I, I will continue to effort this. Oh, that was wild. I have the first I'm, Kitty Pride I'm, issue. I'm, I'm, I'm retiring. I have Kitty that. Pride's I'm first appearance. Now. I knew I wasn't crazy. I knew I wasn't crazy. This is. This is my shame. This is this is like a, the wrestling get out of town I, match. I right? I have I to leave right. the show. I can't believe I was notable. Right. Notable aliases again. This is from Wikipedia. Uh-huh. Notable aliases: Ariel, Sprite, Shadowcat, Star Lord. Oh, that's weird. In any event, I knew Sprite was somewhere in my mind for some reason. Anyway, JVL, what else is going on? Talk to us. I'm, I don't really have anything. That was, that was lost. it. Yeah, it's, I know. I'm sorry about that. What yeah, do you mean he's gone? I mean the Eagles have announced they're gonna. Part ways part with him, ways? and uh, it will wind up. I went a huge Twitter, a very polite Twitter argument with the Philadelphia Inquirer's lead sports writer on Monday oh. uh, about this, and I just find it. I guess Moneyball hasn't come to football, mm. right? There, there's mm-hmm. no saber metrics going mm-hmm. on in football, mm-hmm. I guess, mm-hmm. except in New England, mm-hmm. and everybody mm-hmm. else just sort of looks at, well, I mean, look at him. Mm-hmm. You just look at the eyeball test. He's the greatest super. <laughs> he could be the best player in the league for the next 15 years. He'll have a chance to be the MVP every year because look at, just look at Carson Wentz. Look at the Carson Wentz and his diabetes. You know, I, I and I, it is as if nobody has ever yeah. heard the words Joey Harrington or Robert Griffin the Third or Joey the Harrington. Magic Man. the The NFL is littered, mm-hmm. littered with wunderkind quarterbacks who are great for two or mm-hmm. sometimes three mm-hmm. seasons, mm-hmm. and then defenses mm-hmm. figure them out mm-hmm. because the key mm-hmm. to success mm-hmm. in in the quarterback position in this league is that you have to be a pocket passer yeah. and you have to be able to do the things that the defense wants to make you do. You can't just do what you, you like to, to do because defenses scheme for that. And the idea that Carson Wentz is going to be uh, a, a lifetime 123 QB rating and mm-hmm. going to the guy who's been injured and unable to complete two of his first three seasons is going to spend the next generation in the... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What happens? I'm sure it's to, fine. What, what happens? To, I'm sure it's fine. What happens to Foles? Foles, uh, I believe, is going to be signed for twenty million dollars, and then is going to buy his way out of the contract, and then will essentially be a free agent. And wow. uh, where he makes the most sense, mm-hmm. actually, mm-hmm. is New England. He is the perfect system quarterback to inherit Brady's throne eventually, uh, because we live in the worst of all t- possible timelines. He is likely to go to the New York Football Giants. Question. <laughs> yes. If New England is as bloodless and as data oriented as you suggest, mm-hmm. is there any universe in which they sign Nick Foles and then trade Tom Brady after next season? Could you envision that happening? Could you envision them trading him for like, the, could you envision Bill Belichick trading Tom Brady for like three first round picks? I can envision a world in which Bill Belichick owns the team and decides to do that. I cannot envision a world in which that is a thing that happens without Boston burning for a year. <laughs> right? I mean, you imagine the Tommy from Quincy riots. Tommy! If, <laughs> Tommy! if Brady were to oh, get yeah. traded. No, I, it would be, I mean, it would, it would be it would a controversial. Not like, you could, you could, if they found some sucker on the line to give them 15 first round picks for the next <laughs> decade right and they traded him which would be the greatest deal mm-hmm. ever boston would burn correct if somebody traded their whole what if somebody traded their whole next draft so if cleveland was like we'll trade you we'll give you every pick we have in 2020 for tom. for tom brady boston would burn <laughs> southie would just be in flames for months on end it'd be that picture of the guy with the american flag <laughs> uh, spearing uh, the uh, how, how, how old again. is Foles? He's tw- he is twenty nine. He's uh, everyone goes. He's oh, but he's 30. so much. He's so older, he's so right? much older than Carson Wentz. Is so much younger. He is three mm-hmm. years younger mm-hmm. than Nick mm-hmm. Foles. Three freaking years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone, I'm thinking. Oh, he must be in his thirties. The way people talk about him, he must be done. 
He must be 36. All I can say is, if if Foles did go to New England, Flash would be insufferable. <laughs> He'd be a big Pats fan. Big well, Pats he already fan. is. Oh, he already is. Pats fan. But then he's got your quarterback. Oh, yeah. oh the indignity. Can you imagine? All right. Victorino, well, how are you? I am doing. How was your snowstorm? Uh, I was, uh, snowstorm, was, snowstorm was fine. Did Kate get it all uh, shoveled uh, out pretty well? <laughs> My son uh, oh, helped me. What? And he. Uh, you did it? I did. Even but, with your But gout? he went with another. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and he went down the street with uh, another kid. Offering to uh, do some shoveling. Did he get arrested because he's not white? Oh, what? <laughs> wow! No, no. What are you talking about? He, uh, uh, they, they did fine and they made some money. But then they went over to a couple, like uh, one block over, and they. He tells me that there are other kids. Oh no, we got this house. Oh no, this house. Oh no, we we told you get off. racket. Yeah, we told you the get people, off our block. Yeah, we told these people that we were shoveling their house, but we're getting to it later. So they're like, okay, yeah, stay so, in your own neighborhood. So he, yeah, so he ended up going like three. He's or four learning blocks. the code of the street. He is. I said, there's like roving gangs, and so uh, I said, well, where did you make this money? Where did you go? And he's like, yeah, three or four blocks over. I'm like, oh my gosh, but you know, you do what you got to do. A guy, a guy took me in his van over a couple <laughs> houses down. <laughs> how much did he make? He paid me in candy. Yeah. How much did he make? And did you pay him for doing yours Uh, no uh, I paid him for shoveling uh, an elderly neighbor's I said don't take her money I'll pay for doing hers but he didn't want to take it so I paid him for that and then he made like another 20 bucks off of like one or two other houses something like that Uh, modest so what no like 20 bucks a 20 bucks a shovel that's a perfectly yeah normal thing that was it Um, but uh, you mentioned uh, gout uh, and I'm keeping an eye on... You him. are the gout celebrity the gout. spokesperson. I mean, you really, you, I should, you started the gout trend I did, here before in America. Anything. I think you I were talk, on this I talked about it before the early. favorite. I talked about it before the favorite. Way early. Before for the news in England about the Is there going to be a gout, uh, gout on the rise? And you're going to be Jerry Lewis? Yeah, well, look, and look what I have on. I have a special bracelet. Oh, it's the gout pick, bracelet. It's a gout bracelet. I had my daughter make me from her uh, rainbow loom a hot pink or bright red... Uh, bracelet that is for gout awareness. Is that the color of a gout stone? What it color be. are they? Yeah, Have you well, seen no, them? The inside, like, they can said, you cut them out? I think Does they ever cut it, them out. They're of a probably. They I've like. heard stories, legends, where in the olden days when they didn't have a cure, you know, you could break pieces off and use it as chalk. Well, when you say break pieces off, I mean you have to like rupture the to, skin yes, to pull it out, yes. right? Because it's a rock underneath. It's a rock the skin. underneath the skin. Yeah, it's a rock. But that we haven't gotten to that. So a bright red is the angry gout. Uh, and when people say, oh, what's that bracelet you have? Then I can talk about it. And that's the, the gout whole awareness. gout you awareness. You a sticker for the back of your car. Oh, uh, yeah. A well, ribbon, the ribbon yes, sticker. Yes, that's right. You, you know what I was going to say? The, the, the slogan should be embrace the twinge. Don't, is the, don't make your mm-hmm. ribbon pink because the Komen people will cut you. We get sued for that. No, it has to be like bright red, but not pink. Bright red. They'll cut us. Anyway, my, my whole thought is to have the, the bumper sticker just say embrace the twinge. Because that's where I am now. Just embrace it, because it's going to happen. And you know what? I'm I'm I'm, p- I'm perfectly fine with that. I'll be like Paul Manafort. You can just push me around in a wheelchair. Speaking of which, over the weekend, the upside rolled its way to the top of the box office with nineteen and a half million dollars, followed by Aquaman with seventeen million, and in third place, A Dog's Way Home with eleven million. I hope we're all seeing A Dog's Way Home. No. Mm. Uh, you, my one thought on this is, yes. boy, you know, I bet the Academy Awards would really like to have a box office draw like Kevin Hart, whose films always open at number one, uh, to host their show instead of having nobody to host it as they're doing this year. At 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 this very moment, Sonny, at this recording, where does he stand? Does he want to? Does he not want to? He know, wants to, but he won't. The Academy has announced that they're going with no host. That they're gonna. They're, How does that work? I, who knows? Who the knows? accountant. So, the I mean, accountant from Ernst and Young. Let's be or honest. Whatever. Let's be honest. The host really only does one thing, really, right? The big monologue at the beginning, and from there, it's a bunch Shit. of kind of like introducing people. And I could do that. Yeah, sure, exactly. They could easily. Vic Mattis could just as easily fill in for any of these other extremely famous. I think so. Uh, accomplished. Uh, Plus, there'd people. be no pressure. There'd be no You'd be pressure. No pressure. I, I have nothing pressure. to lose. I got no. nothing to lose. Uh, no, but it's 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 always. I mean, Kevin Hart is is. I, the appeal of Kevin Hart it eludes me, but it is there and it is real. So yeah, he's a short fella. He is very short. He's very short. Uh, okay, so but we're not talking about any of those movies, are we? We are talking about movies. Two movies that are on Netflix currently: Bird Box and Bandersnatch. And we saw them both. I saw them both. 
Uh, yes, I saw them both. JVL. I watched one of them, sort of. Okay. Okay. You didn't want to get you, you were scared of Bird Box. Too scared I don't of Bird watch. Box. I uh, look. I'm a girl about this and have been since I, I was a kid. I, I yes. don't. The one th- I just don't want scary things in my like. I get no mm-hmm. cathar. I get nothing mm-hmm. from it. Mm-hmm. It does I, nothing for me. Okay. I would say Bird Box isn't particularly scary. I also, found it disturbing. It's disturbing, it's disturbing, kind of. Yeah, but but not like boo scary. Not like yeah. uh, a Blumhouse yeah, horror does not fast for forward me. motion of ghost running at you. Scary, none no. scary. No, it's, okay. But it's horror. It's, it's, it's anything horror. involving, not you know what it is? It's, it's, it's sort of, yeah, it's horror-ish, horror-ish. but it's, it's disturbing. And anything with kids. I, ah, kids. The, the kids. world we live so in is scared. horrible enough. It's, the world we live in point. is horrible enough. Good point. So, in other words, only three of us saw Bird Box. <gasps> yes! <laughs> Bird Box is no flight of fancy. People see something so terrible, they're killing themselves. My guess is it's scenes from the movie Aquaman. Sandra Bullock is taking is trying to take her kids to safety on a wing and a prayer. She's navigating rapids while blindfolded. Talk about a suicide mission. I give Bird Box three stars. <laughs> that was it. Three stars. Yeah. yeah that was I'm sorry. <clears throat> Did we just go through an entire review of Bird Box without a <laughs> joke? Wow. Because something's got to be wrong with Gene. Is, is Gene, Gene right? just phoning this that's in? too much, is he man. That's just, he's phoning it in. That's, is he, it's, oh, yeah, that's it's, too it's, much. It's, it's too much. How yeah. dare you go there? Yeah. That's I lewd. remember when he came across her before. That's that's lewd. That's lewd. No, I'm sorry. It was came across that face okay. before. All right. We don't have this to go back nothing? there. We don't have to go back there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, how about a big boy review? Uh, Sunny. Bird Box. Bird Box. Uh, so Bird Box stars Sandra Bullock as a woman who has two children under her charge. The film opens with her getting out to a river where they have to keep themselves, they have to keep themselves blindfolded because they can't, they can't see anything. We don't know why yet uh, until we flash back five years and learn that there was some sort of event, some sort of invasion possibly, where malevolent creatures appeared and they... Uh, made people see either their biggest fear or their greatest hope or something, uh, and it made them uh, all, it made everyone who sees it kill themselves. Except for the crazy people who see it, and they go kind of sane. Uh, and uh, but anyway, anyway, so uh, the the this the setup of the movie is essentially uh, if you were doing an elevator pitch on this, it's a quiet place but with blind people, or possibly a quiet place by way of the mist. Um, I uh, there the the film. Uh, I thought it was fine. It's a fine movie. It's fine. It's okay. It's it's. It, I I I was I was neither blown away nor like disgusted by it. I watched it. I was it it kept my interest. Um, the 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 best parts of the film I think are the 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 flashback scenes where Sandra Bullock is first with Sarah Paulson who plays her sister. They go to the hospital. You know, Sandra Bullock is pregnant at the beginning of the film. Um, uh, she the this event happens and people start killing themselves and she winds up in a house with John Malkovich and B D Wong and some other folks. Um, and they they have to figure out how to survive. Uh, I I liked I kind of liked all of that 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 part of it. The stuff on the river. Then we and we keep flashing back to her on the river and flashing back to the house and then flashing forward to the river and flashing back to the house. I thought the structure of this was very, very weird and kind of poorly done. The guys on Red Letter Media made this point. I don't want to. I don't want to steal it from them. I want to credit them. Um, that the, the problem with this structure is that it removes all tension from the stuff that takes place in the house by 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 doing this kind of flashback and flash forward structure. You know that by the time uh, everyone leaves the house, everyone is dead except for Sandra Bullock and these two kids. One of whom is the one she's pregnant with. And then one of whom must be this other lady who comes to the house. She is pregnant. You know, she has she has taken these two children under her wing, so to speak, uh, and must protect them. Um, uh, Sandra Bullock is fine in this movie. I liked her. John Malkovich is great. He's John great. Malkovich, you know, he, he's 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 fantastic. And I like my my low key favorite thing about this movie is that John Malkovich plays essentially a MAGA conservative. He's like, he's shotgun wielding. He's running around. He's, you know, telling people that they got to stay out of their house. Everyone's got to look out for themselves. There, there are two types of people in this world. There are the, the what is it? Ass- the assholes and the dead. 
and he's right about everything. This is what it. This is this is what it. Uh, the the irony of all this is that he's portrayed as kind of this heartless conservative. Vote, but he's actually right about everything. There's a British guy who comes to the house and he's like, "You got to keep that guy out. Keep that guy out of the house. He's Tom, bad. The great Tom Hollander. He's he's a crazy person. You got to keep him out of this house. He's we need to protect ourselves and not let him in. And all the rest of them are like, "Oh, we're gonna lock you in the garage, or we're gonna let this guy in because we need to look out for everyone. Com- we need compassion. We need compassion. To, we need to open our borders and let everyone." in and he's like no we got to keep these people out they're a threat and it turns out he was right make our house great again john <laughs> magovich yeah hero yeah. of the film yeah. no, uh, he, uh, he is because it's the woman who let the pregnant woman lets him in and then the older woman another great actress from uh, silver linings playbook i forget her name she uh knocks uh, john malkovich unconscious and yeah. then they, they put him and then of course then you realize this guy they let in the British, is insane. British guy's a crazy person. The great he, Tom he tries to he tries yeah. to get them all to look at the evil spirit. Uh, there's all sorts of if if you had seen this movie JBL, you would have a, a litany of nitpicks like uh, like we did with Aquaman okay. and, and the I last do. the last Jedi. It's not my movie. It's okay. No, it's all right. It's the litany is good. The litany is good. But the, there is there is a definite. I mean, like just for starters. Uh, is this creature a physical presence or is it merely a spiritual presence? If it's merely a spiritual presence, why can't it get into the houses? Right. If it's a physical it's presence, physical why presence. can't it open doors? Uh, it's so there's misty. It's it, 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 there's a there's a very smoke monster on the Lost Island feel to it, where it can be kind of physical right. when it needs to be, and uh, but isn't physical enough to actually interact with the real real world. It's it's odd. I'm it, it's I don't. Um, it's it's the sort of movie where you could have used just a little bit more explanation on stuff to to make the world feel real, more real. My observation, one observation for you, and I have a lot of thoughts on Bird Box, but um, uh, so my parents saw Bird Box. Mm. I was going to tell my mother to see it just as a joke because I said I was going to tell her it stars Sandra Bullock. You know what's not to love? Uh, but of course, my father made her see it, and she, my mother, was not a fan of the movie, but um, my father loved it. Uh, but it had the. You mentioned this before about the problems, like when you see movies like Ballad of Buster Scruggs, when you're seeing it at home versus a theater, the tendency to be distracted. You're going up, you're checking your phone, emails, texting, whatever it is, and you're not having the full experience, let alone not being on a big screen. So for like my parents to see it, my mother's getting up because she's making dinner, she's coming back, what's happening? And then at some point, and she was telling me that she was asking my father, she said, so, so why does she have to be blindfolded? You know, while as they're rowing down the going down the river, and my father's like, because the aliens, you can't look at the aliens, and I sort of laughed it off. Maybe they're aliens. It's but no, one, no one really knows. But that's the thing. Initially, I said that's a funny thing, aliens. But in fact, it's not viral. They said this early on in the movie. It, it's not some sort of a brain thing. It's not. It's 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 uh, it, there's there's some sort of weird physical How presence. How do they know? Oh. Um, well, well they, you they get, tell you this in the in the news, but also Tom Hollander had been dro- sketching. The creature. He'd been, he had been sketching weird. what he had seen. I, the the thing weird. is, the thing is, what everybody sees is different. It is unique to mm, the person. So, for that's instance, uh, John Magovich, his wife, leaves the house that they are holed up in and to help pregnant Sandra Bullock come in. Like she wants to save mm. pre- pregnant mm. Sandra Bullock, and John Magovich is like, "No, no, no! Don't do that! You, we have to save ourselves. Keep her out there." And this woman sees the the monster and starts talking about her wife or her mother, mother. her mother. Who had died and how she wanted to see her and and so she like goes and kills herself. She sits in a burning. Car. She sits in a burning car and that's how she dies. Uh, the but the, uh, once again, John John Magovich Wright should yeah. have, should have listened to him, lady. Don't help this lady. Don't help that Mm-mm. that pregnant lady. Be you fine. Save yourself first. That's right. Uh, but also, uh, but like everybody who sees it sees something different. Um, right. So it's it is it's some sort of weird. Uh, I, I, it, I mean, it doesn't really matter, does I, it? Because we never I, see it. I did have this thought, Sonny, which was. Um, the, the way to survive is if you stay indoors. So you and I would be fine. Yeah, we would <laughs> be. Yeah, yeah, we'd be, we'd be totally fine. I don't know if that's out of the question. Yeah. Could this movie have been positioned as part of the Cloverfield expanded universe? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Question. Yeah. How is it different from The Quiet Place? Well, in Instead a quiet place, being, you, you know, can't you make can't sound. talk because a thing will kill you, and in this, you can't look, look. or you'll kill yourself. Yes, mm-hmm. that's basically. Is that not the single most derivative thing you've ever heard? Well, anywhere? I mean, well, the, I mean, I would assume that this film was already uh, under production before yeah. the book had a quiet been done. Place the book, in came fact, out. was supposed yeah. to come yeah. out uh, years ago, but then uh, M Night Shyamalan. Yeah, right. You could say you could say it's also derivative of the happening. Right, and he held back because he didn't want people to get, as he said, because it came out. At, 
the happening came first. And so he had to wait a few more years. And then, of course, the quiet, you know, I mean, you just keep on waiting. So I guess they just said, let's just do it on Netflix as essentially a, a made for TV movie. But uh, I thought it was I thought it, I thought it was fine. It's fine. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, um, I hear that Netflix yeah. has said that this has had 200 billion non contiguous <laughs> seconds of use from unique viewers. Yeah. Well, it, which so, makes so, it so, unbelievable. It's essentially the Titanic. Well, here's here's of Netflix. Here's what Netflix. Here's said. my blank check. That's what these, yeah. the investors will say. That here's what Netflix said. Netflix uh, has claimed that 45 million subscribers watched the movie within the first seven days. They, and they qualified this by saying watched at least 70% of the movie within the first uh, seven days. So they, they, have, they, have watched, they have watched a significant portion of the film. Can okay? you imagine a studio saying, good news, guys. Only 30% of the audience left the theater during Aquaman yeah. this weekend. Right, right. So Because that's what this is saying. You when know, you say 70% people watch at least 70%, of what yeah. it means is 30% of people wouldn't even finish the damn thing. Right. Yes, that sounds about right. Uh, I have to fag. I, I mean, how many, how, how many people, but I, well, this is, and, and then they tried to say, well, this is the equivalent then of a $450 million opening. This is a, <laughs> this is a half billion dollar worldwide opening, which is, which is insane. Obviously we all realize it's insane, but we all, re- okay, we all realize it's insane, but we also uh, all need to recognize the fact that a significant number of people decided to stay home and watch this thing. Uh, which in turn keeps them away from theaters, uh, which is means that, that that this film is doing exactly what Netflix wants it to do, mm-hmm. which is to become a default de facto entertainment option for people who are just looking for something to do, just looking for something to do. Which is to say it just wants to become the new cable television. I mean, this yes. is like Netflix you know, it wants is, to be it is, all Netflix, it's trying to do is supplant cable. Netflix not just wants to challenge be, Hollywood. Oh, and totally. No, the, but no, but that's that, I, I don't I don't think that those two things are at odds. Exactly. I think you can do I think you can do both. I mean, a, this is what the studios were always afraid of, that TV would right. kill. But studios have been afraid studios. of every technological innovation since like 1920. Right, radio is going to kill the movies. You know. They haven't been wrong yet. The audience numbers keep yeah. dropping. Yeah, true, but the business is maturing. It's just a different business than it was when it, you know, when Hollywood. But, first but it, it just, it's happened. just, it's just, it's just that it wants it both ways because it wants the TV thing, but it wants to be treated like a movie in the theater, and so we, it, it gets, it, it wants to qualify. And it gets quali- Does it qualify for Oscars and stuff? If, if no, you have to be Roma in a did. theater. If you want. A film, oh, it's got to do. It's got to be. If you want a film to qualify for the Oscars, it has to run for at least two weeks in New York and Los Angeles. Those are that. That's like the only real qualification. But you have to actually put it in theater. Those two cities, and that's it. Yes. Well, there you go. I mean, Roma played in more. What's What's also interesting to think about is the fact that Roma has played in a bunch of theaters and played on a bunch of screens, and we have no box office data on that. Yeah, because, it's not on the thing because Netflix has not released the the numbers to the like. You know the. You know why? Because it's because it's so big, so big, and they've it's, they've made so much money that they don't want to scare people. No, I, I, that's why. No, I am, mm-hmm. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, I mean, it's I. What percentage of people do you think have finished Roma all the way through? <laughs> <laughs> don't know. Uh, okay. Do we have any more bird box thoughts? Uh, no, no. Okay. Close your eyes, Marion. That's all I had to say when I was thinking about this movie. Just close your eyes, Marion, from Raiders. Oh, from Raiders. Don't look. Everything will be okay. Just don't look. But apparently, they also do voices, right? They're talking. Well, you can to hear. You, yeah, you, you can, can hear. hear. So it's 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 uh, multi sensory. Uh, that didn't help. Uh, okay. Uh, next up is uh, no. Wait a minute. We were gonna speaking oh, of things speaking you can hear. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. Hold uh, on. You know, I'm, I'm going to do the transition for you. I'm going to do the transition. I had one, but right. you go for I'm it. Go for it. Go for it. Speaking of things you can hear, JVL. That's a. B plus transition, Sonny. Well, I had to wing it I like because it. I had to wing it because you know. Yeah, I you forgot. I was, I was, no, I was going to say that everyone needs to maintain I'm a sense of calm in these. It's always panic in these movies. If only, if only people remain calm, JVL, that's better. That, and that's why he's the pro. That's that's so much better. I that's why we, we, we changed. The we, we called an audible right before the show's coming, as you could tell by this episode. I am thrilled to have my 
favorite sponsor back on the show. We love all uh, our sponsors. We equally. love all our sponsors we equally. The oh, same yeah. way I love all my children equally. The JBL does have a favorite. And uh, the Calm is the, the favorite of all of my, my sponsored children. It's, uh, so Calm is a C-A-L-M, because I never say it right, evidently, is a, an app you have for your phone. You download it, you subscribe to it, and it is stuffed full of uh, meditations and breathing exercises and what we use it for most in our family, sleep stories. Uh, Calm, what we use it for, and again, we've been using it for like a year and a half, two years now, long before they came to the show. Uh, we use it to help our kids get to sleep at night, and it is amazing. Uh, and I will tell you, in fact, what happened last night. So I, I got home from work late, and I was sitting watching Bandersnatch, and uh, my two girls began appearing at the banister overlooking our family room like every four minutes saying, Daddy, I can't sleep. Daddy, I'm having trouble falling asleep. Daddy, I can't sleep. Can you come up and cuddle us? Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, have you listened to your sleep story? He said, no, we forgot to put the sleep story on. So I said, okay, go, go get into bed, girls. Go get into bed. And I waited five minutes. I came upstairs, and I cuddled into bed with my two sweet little princesses, one on each side, and I brought our friend from Calm, Tamara Levitt. Mm. The Queen of Calm, a meditative bedtime tale. Would you like to hear a bedtime story? Yes. Five, min oh, five minutes later, both girls are snoring. Mm. Oh. It was the greatest thing, and and I have to say, this is, you know... Like it's I, amazing. I uh, I like to think that I do nothing but real talk when it comes to parenting. Real talk. Real talk when it comes to parenting. I don't subscribe to the hallmark view of children. There is nothing so great as sleeping children. Yes. When your children oh, are yeah. asleep, you never so love nice your children more, more than, when, than yeah, you do yeah. when they're mm -hmm. sleeping. And even more when they're, like, nestled up sleeping mm -hmm. to you. And so, for me, like, Tamara's voice and calm.com. The uh, the sleep app is like the background music of almost all of my favorite memories of my children. And it's fantastic. It works every time. It is better than better. It's like in a Mission Impossible movie when they, you know, like there's always like some little like air gun that you can like, you know, into the, the person's <laughs> neck and all of a sudden they just fall asleep. That's what Calm.com does, especially mm. for kids. And they have a whole library of sleep stories just for children. And then they have them for adults. They have... Uh, special ones that are just sort of timed for like an afternoon nap for a siesta. If you yourself just want to conk out for 20 minutes, it's fantastic. So uh, the good people at Calm are giving people 25% off of their premium subscription, which is a really good deal. Uh, all you have to do is go to calm.com slash sub beacon. That's calm.com, uh, C-A-L-M dot com slash sub beacon, two B's, no hyphen. Uh, and they'll give you 25% off of their premium subscription. Uh, it's unlimited access to all of their content. It's really, really great. I, I simply cannot recommend it enough. Thank you, JVL. So when you're um, listening to Calm, you have these choices to make. Uh, you can. Oh, uh, you've got oh, lots of choices. Wow, I can listen to Tamara or Eric wonderful. Bra oh. or Clark Peters. Oh. Speaking of lots of choices, Bandersnatch. Uh, we all saw Bandersnatch, yes. Did anyone else see Bandersnatch? <laughs> all because between those. Bird Box and Bandersnatch, I'm really hoping we have... G Gene, welcome back! <clears throat> Bandersnatch. This movie made about as much sense as Time Bandits, but I loved it anyway. It's a choose-your-own-adventure movie... I wish they had this for a manual in space. <laughs> I give Bandersnatch three stars. I also like the movie Snatch. Really, I love anything ending in Snatch. Back to you. Thank you, Gene. It's, it's, it's a capsule. It's, it's, it's a, a capsule, capsule review. review. Well, there were it's two. Cap, there was two, two, so two it's like about the size of one review is like too many reviews. Yeah, okay. Gene. I wish we had had one movie called Snatchbox. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. I like that. Ooh, I'll save that one. Uh, uh, yeah, Emmanuel in Space. That's a great series. The Emmanuel series. You can do that in, uh, you know, choose. You get to choose. You know, Was there really an Emmanuel in Space? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ask Mike Goldfarb. He's very familiar really? with the Emmanuel series. Uh, that, was a, that was a Cinemax. Uh, that was a regular on the Cinemax well, you know, rotation. It started in the 70s and then it made it. Yeah, Cinemax was, had the, the, the genius idea of buying it. 
and running it at 11 Got to reboot that franchise. <laughs> running the it expanded at universe. The Emmanuel <laughs> expanded yes, universe. Yes, it was. It starts in Paris and it ends in space. I mean, you know, it knows no bounds. She knows no bounds. <laughs> it's basically, Emmanuel. It's basically like the Muppets. Yes, it's very much like the Muppets. Mm. Uh, the J- Muppets J- go to Emmanuel. JVL, how about a Bandersnatch review? Bandersnatch is a Black Mirror production. It's not actually a movie. <laughs> there. Do you like that? That's about wow. So let me tell you what Bandersnatch right. is. Bandersnatch is a quasi-interesting experimental product which is half video game and half movie. But the truth is, is much closer to Space Ace and Dragon's Lair than it is to, say, Clue, if you're thinking about movies that have multiple endings. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a gigantic act of sort of dorm room bull session intellectual masturbation where you have a bunch of people making the movie essentially for themselves mm-hmm. uh, and burying Easter eggs and, you know, one of them even said in some of the press materials, yeah, we have some golden eggs hidden in there that people are going to have to really walk through. You're going to have to go through this thing a bunch of times before they find them. This is not Bioshock. This is not a... People don't sit there with movies that are choose your own adventures and go through them. Who has the time for this? This is essentially a time waster. If you can spend more than 30 minutes on this thing, then you have made some bad life choices and you need to re-examine what it is you are doing with the time God has given you on this earth. Victorina. No, uh, so I imagine that if you're like some sort of 20-something 20, 20 dude... No uh, wife or children or girlfriend. Uh, you could watch this over and over again. Yeah, and, you and that's make what they want. Right? Choices. This is what they you want. Can, it's, it's branching over right? and over. And and over. So they, they filmed 250 minutes worth of footage, and it's like you know, hey, main character, do you want to have cocoa puffs or frosted flakes for breakfast? And you choose. Do you want the cocoa puffs or? And then they zoom in on the main character while they subtly cut the scene. And I mean, as a technological achievement, it's kind of interesting because what you're doing is branching streaming, mm-hmm. right? Because it, Unlike, you know, in a video game, all the information data is right there in one place on on a disc in front of you, and it's all self-contained. Here, it's all coming to you over the tubes. Mm -hmm. And so, you you know, Netflix has to have a way of taking input back upstream from the viewer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, technologically, it's sort of a very interesting achievement. They actually had to write a bunch of code to make something like this possible. Why? Well, I mean, j- just because you can do something and you can create interesting, elegant engineering solutions for it does not make it art and does not make it interesting and does not make it necessary. If you want a, a an example of the decadence of sort of late period golden age of streaming, I present this to you Bandersnatch. Thank you, JVL. Wow. Uh, I mean, I... Yeah. I I hated this movie more than I hated because it's not a movie. More than I hated Vice. Oh, I, think I, I, res- I resented every second it was leeching out of me because, as Netflix has said, as a company, they view you've heard this right. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. Netflix said, our prime competitor is sleep. Yeah. You know, we're really our, the only person we're really competing against is sleep. We want people. To, if you spend a minute more with Bandersnatch than sleeping, then you have just cheated yourself and your entire life. But they get to say we get, what, hundreds of millions of views because people keep on trying to want to figure out other endings? Is that why? I mean, they're getting... What are have the numbers? they said it? What are the numbers? They actually, I don't think they have. No, I don't think... Said. I think the patience <clears throat> audiences will have for something like this mm-hmm. is about mm-hmm. this big. I, I, I also didn't quite get what the movie was about. It is about a boy who is making a video game that itself is a branching video game, but maybe like Netflix no, is, itself is a character in it. This yes. is, this and is so, so this is the real problem with Bandersnatch, I think, is that it is funny. it is like all black mirror things, not about the thing. It's a comment about the thing. Right. So it's not it's not a choose your own adventure movie. It's a comment about choose your own adventure stories. Oh. And uh the the kind of facile uh, obsession with the the falsehood of choice that we don't actually have any choices that we are we are we are you know led down certain paths and we have we there are only there there are only certain branches we can go down um uh so this that's my my big problem with it like you said i think it's actually a fascinating technological document it is a fascinating uh, engineering solution to a to a problem that didn't really exist, I guess. 
Um, but I, I, I do think it is, I think it's interesting for what it is. But, but, but again, my problem with it is the problem I have with all Black Mirror things, which is that I don't know if you, JVL, uh, JVL do you, have you watched any I know, Black Mirror? I know enough about Black Mirror, yes. So Black Mirror shtick is like, what if the internet, but more, and it's always bad except for one, one episode that everybody loves because it turns out not to be bad because it's actually a surprise because they, they actually do something surprising <laughs> That's the twist. on the, the twist show. Is, the twist is, hey, it works out. The twist is like, hey, it's actually not all bad. Uh, so I my 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 frustration with Black Mirror kind of leaches into my frustration with Bandersnatch, which is that it is it is not telling a story; it is trying to moralize to you about the the evils of our moment and and you know and, and but how technology doing it through lies the to evil you. Of but doing our it moment. through the evil of our moment. Mm. I like it 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 it's, it has this kind of smugness. Uh, to it that I find I find deeply frustrating because you know that all Netflix is doing is crunching the numbers on how many people stayed on for how long and which choices they took and now they're they are pairing your choices to the algorithm to see what things you will want to see more of next. I mean this this idea that, that and the answer is always reruns of Friends. Ex- <laughs> no, no, I mean that's why that's why this they spent a billion dollars on yeah. Friends. I mean it, the the. Uh, the simple fact of the matter is that it want, uh, Netflix and Black Mirror want to have their cake and eat it too, and they're doing it, and everybody's <laughs> over this thing, and it's all deeply frustrating to watch. I, I just, I like, I again, I find the whole the smugness Ooh. of it to be yeah. to be very, very off putting. <laughs> like JVL, I are like, what? Whoa! My it never comes from that Funny. side no, of the it studio. It never comes from that side of the studio. My uh, goodness. I, okay. Um, it was like it started off Choose Your Own Adventure, but then it turned into Truman Show or something, yeah. right? And no, literally like, Truman Show. What? Well, but this is, and this is, I. It turns out they're all just actors in a Netflix production. Right. It turns out actually the girl from yeah. it goes on to work at did Netflix you, to build a show called Net. Did you guys? Did you guys do Choose Your Own Adventure books growing up? Yes. Yes. That's of the course. only books I read. So those were. <laughs> it's totally <laughs> true. That's the not least. A lie. The least surprising thing on the show today. <laughs> uh, but but those books would Except always. For have, hot air balloon. That is if if, if, if if you were a wimp. You read Hot Air Balloon Adventure because no one died in that one. <laughs> well, those and those books always had like a weird branch, right? Where like you wind up with something like really, really weird. Like you step, yeah. in, you step into the wizard's cave and you go throw forward through time yeah. to you know, but yeah, but but, but like the, the problem with Bandersnatch is that it has a lot of those endings. Uh, and I don't anyway. That's one of the problems. The story itself was fine. It was banal. I mean, more than anything else, it was just uh, or banal. Is it banal? Banal? What are we? Banal. Banal. I say uh, banal. You yeah. know, I'm always right. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I got a weird look from Vic when I said banal. It, it was, it over, was you know. appalling. Uh, uh, <laughs> anime. Anime. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm also down on this for similar reasons to JBL. You're right about the fault, the choices, the limiting of choices, because in the, you think you're making it, we're going to go one way or another, but in the fact, like, oh, I don't want him to drop acid, oh, well, then he'll slip it in the drink anyway, he's going to take the acid so we can get to the next scene where he's tripping. Yeah. Or they just, uh, suddenly you have that split screen with the two TVs, and you, gotta, and you just keep on rewinding, and it's Groundhog's Day, like, where you just repeat the scenes until, so, mm. I mean, obviously, I guess we reached the end of one, you know, choice, it ended, and so you have to do it again and again until you get it quote right we I don't got, I, I got all five endings or all six endings how I, much time did you it's, spend it's, on this it's, Sonny it wow. took about it took about 90 minutes we, we we had two sessions basically once while Katie was napping uh, and then after Katie went to bed we finished uh, the, the whole thing so it was like we basically watched about 50 or 60 minutes of it and then another like 30 minutes of it after it was very annoying too because I had to like uh, first off how did you watch it did you watch it on your TV Computer. Like with your remote. Okay, computer. so I had to hook my computer up to my TV. Yeah. And it was it was like deeply frustrating because I couldn't just do the choices with my, my yeah. Blu-ray player. We started upstairs in that TV. They told you you couldn't do it on yeah. this TV unless you did that. So the TV I have downstairs is um, a recent, more recent purchase from like a year ago. That worked. Oh. Uh, yeah. And you just, and you could see the time, sorry, the time lapse and then... Uh, uh, yeah. and make the choice. I think it would have it would have probably worked on my uh, on my TV downstairs because I have my PS4. Like I, I use the the yeah. PS4 yeah. to do Netflix, but yeah. 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 but with my with my mm-hmm. Samsung Blu-ray player, they were like, nope, mm-hmm. can't mm-hmm. do it on this. If anyone's wondering, by the way, the Choose Your Adventure collection, which I've read almost all the pretty much all those books, uh, Sabotage is the best one that takes place in World War II, mm-hmm. involves Germans. 
I mean, come on. Whose side but, were you on? No, you're, you're, you're were against you always the... Trying, you're no, always no. trying to angle the guy into the, the concentration camp? Make the deal. No, it's not. He's terrible. And I thought it was very exotic when I read that book because uh, it took place in Morocco. And then you realize that the author was basically just riffing on Casablanca. Like, years later, like, oh, I see what this is. But uh, it's still entertaining. And death. You know, you could die. You know, I mean, but a number of those books ended in death. I mean, that, that's what made it good. I, when I read those Choose Your Own Adventures, I always read them with... My finger. I'm so risk averse <laughs> that you I were would cheating. You weren't cheating, were you? A hundred percent, I would cheat. Oh. Uh, not by looking ahead, but by bookmarking where I had been. Oh. Oh, okay. So that if I needed to go back and branch, I could you branch make from the same there. mistake because you might. Make and the so same I would all, you know, like my typically, I would hold the book and I'd have the book sort of pinned between my <laughs> forefinger and my thumbs, but then the other six <laughs> fingers would be all wedged into specific page branches, just in case, just, just in, case in case I have to go back. That's good. That's yeah, good. It's very bad. Um, what what uh, what else? Oh, Netflix. So while we were talking about this, and we decided to do uh, Banner Smash even before the news came out that Netflix is upping their prices. Uh, the highest category is thirteen dollars. They said the low, no. the minimum no, the, is nine. Who's may who's who's only paying nine? There's like a there's a sixteen dollar tier. I don't know if that's for like four K uh, plus like oh, I'm, oh, oh, I'm oh, already paying sixteen. Oh, yeah. For I the think four K. Maybe. Oh. I don't know how this affects because me. Because Live and Maddie in 4K is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this affects me because I watch it. Uh, so I have I have a deal through Comcast where Comcast pays for my Netflix. Like it's included in yeah, the yeah, Comcast yeah, yeah, yeah. So you really package. That. You'll pay the next time your Comcast so, yeah. contract renews. No kidding. Well, no when kidding. It, the next time it renews, but it doesn't renew for like two years. So I think I'm like I think I'm like I basically am getting grandfathered you got in. Grandfathered I guess. in. I don't know. Okay. Um, and, and the other thing is, of course, they made that decision, and then its stock pro, uh, price ro- rose or shot up. Uh, something like three hundred fifty-four dollars a share yesterday, yeah. or something insane, according to Elevator News. <laughs> according to the Elevator yeah, News, that's where yeah. I get my news yeah. from. That's where, I get all, that's where I get all my stock tips from. <laughs> is the Elevator? Yes. So I mean, that's a lot for I'm sure. I'm drinking. I'm drinking Oban, and I'm, oh, I'm buying Oban. Netflix. Oban. You're drinking like, Oban. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting drunk over. Uh, let's get some more stocks. Love that Elevator News. Elevator uh, News. <laughs> you, you work in our building. It's an inside joke. Uh, I, anyway, so I mean, it's it, 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 it's working for them, isn't it? You know, JVL. my feelings about capitalism and the free market. Yeah, yeah. You're pro. Yeah. You're very pro. You're the most pro. You. This is yeah. why you love Jeff Bezos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do not. I'm one cheer. One cheer for one, cheer, one cheer for one capitalism. Cheer. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me read you boys some numbers. Oh God, are you going to tell us about market caps again? You have heard of the company Apple, or I'm sorry, a- uh, Alphabet, right? Yes. They have this this product called Google. Mm-hmm. They organize all the world's information. Uh, if you had to guess how many, how many, what the multiple of Google's market capitalization is of Netflix's, how many, how many Netflix's would you say that Google is worth? I don't know, three. You really think that? That Google is only worth three Netflixes. I don't know. I'm just I'm trying to guess what it actually is, not what it should be. What sort of? What do you think it should be? A million, right? I don't know. Google versus Netflix. Yeah. What right. do we think the odds are that Netflix will even exist in any form other than like what Yahoo is today, ten years from now? Uh, I think pretty good. I think it. I think it will be a basically an HBO. Okay. HBO is not Google, right? I mean, Google is actually taking over the entire world. world. Right, right, right. Uh, it, Google has Google's market cap is four times what Netflix's is, uh, and where Netflix's PE ratio is, the trailing PE ratio is one twenty-seven, and Google's is forty. The PE ratio for people don't follow is basically like the market's these... optimism on you know how the, the growth potential for the stock. It's Ford. You've heard of the company Ford, right? They make these things mm-hmm. that they sell yeah. to people, and people pay thousands of dollars for mm-hmm. them. Yeah, but they're all sh- these <laughs> things. They get in them, and they they use uh, they use fossil fuels mm-hmm. to to create little miniature explosions, which yeah. then propel the things for thousands of miles. Mm-hmm. Where the people then yeah. actually go from their homes and they're, place of residences to jobs, where they you, create economic what value. What you're saying is they make things. They make they things. make things, things that people pay for that create use. economic value. Uh huh. Yeah. Ford's total market cap- capitalization is thirty four billion. Netflix's is one hundred and fifty-five billion. Mm-hmm. Netflix is worth five Fords. Yeah. Are you? What time is it, Sonny? It's uh, what is it? Fifty. Are you f- kidding me? 
this is this is the man, and this is this so this is the problem. So when you have massive market failures, and the overvaluation of Netflix is clearly a market failure, it creates all sorts of distortions downstream, and so Hollywood is essentially fighting against a market failure, and you can't do that. Like at some point, the Netflix bubble bursts. At some point, they run out of places to go, and the market realizes, hey, actually, this thing is sort of preposterous, and the bubble pops and it shrinks back down to manageable size. Um, but until then, everybody else who lives in the real world where you have a budget and you have to you, you make products and you sell products and you have to make more money by selling than you spend to produce them, they are caught competing against this thing which simply exists because of a mistake in the materialist system that we have established for ourselves. I, my only Sunny. My, my only critique of this is that, Netflix has Bernie 2020. My, my Netflix has 137 million subscribers. Uh, so let's see. That's 100. Th- I'm I'm putting these numbers in a little calculator. Uh, times. So what is it? What's the new? What's the new monthly rate going to be? So let's say 13. 13. Let's say most people get 13. 13. Uh, I don't know. So it's it's so that's oh shit, I did it wrong. Uh, anyway, uh, it, they're, they're pulling in. I, what 1.6 1.7 billion dollars of revenue a month from mm-hmm. their subscribers mm-hmm. so they're pulling in 15 billion dollars of revenue and what are they spending to get all that revenue i mean they no, are well, they I, are look, I understand. shooting money out of a fire hose i understand i understand i understand that 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 the you know they're they're spending a lot of money um to make a lot of money but it, they they do have a very significant income stream i mean their income stream is essentially all of hollywood put together right wow yes uh, so because that's not nothing given... that's not nothing it's huge but that's but that's hard. and that's that's not that has nothing to do with venture capitalism that has nothing to do with no, investments well, from people that that is just money that is coming to them from subscribers I, I, okay so i it is all of hollywood's theatrical releases put together I think it is not all of Hollywood. Okay, yeah, right. It's not, I mean, it's so not Hollywood like is more and, than right, right. it is DVD. It right. is television studios. Yeah, yeah. It is mm-hmm. foreign right, right, rights. Right, 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 right. I mean, if the if the question is really where do you think there is more value, Netflix or Hollywood right now? I think it's crazy to think. I mean, content is king, right? And the truth yep. is, Netflix is creating the streaming version of what cable was, which was 500 channels with nothing to watch. There is nothing on Netflix to watch. They are shooting money out of the fire hose and giving people Bird Box and Bandersnatch and a Christmas Prince too. And you know what? People most watch people, it, but most, they don't want that. They you know actually what? want. They don't want you know the what? Netflix original most, stuff. They're most, watching Friends. Most people just want something to kill the night with. They want something to take away their pain. The pain they want something to take away their pain mm-hmm. for ninety minutes, mm-hmm. and they'll watch Kurt Russell uh, as sexy Santa, and they'll watch. Uh, they'll watch Choose Your Own Adventure for three hours to find all of the little Easter egg endings, and they'll they'll keep Eagles watching. documentary. They'll they'll do they'll do bird box challenges until mm-hmm. they go off a cliff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I like I my, your faith in the the idea of what the consumer wants mm-hmm. is much higher than mine because what I think the consumer wants is something to just sit there and take away. Uh, their their feeling of existence misery. I mean, I'm, misery. I'm looking at the. I mean, their total operating income. Again, you you ask like you know what is their what was their net profit net loss? I mean, they're when you zero it all out, they're making less than a billion dollars. They're clearing less than a billion a year on all that revenue. Uh, in profit. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, I understand that you know. A billion dollars isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things, but it's still making money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like not it's, not hundred fifty PE ratio money. Well, okay, fine, but that doesn't change the fact that it is again. It is suddenly it is, this is a Motley Fool podcast. It's, it's, I, I mean, I like I'm 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 be, I'm out of my depth here. This is not what I this is not what I do. But I I do think that there's something to be said for the fact that they are generating again fifteen billion dollars in revenue that has that is coming out of about that i don't know what the actual number is it's somewhere in there that is coming out of people's pockets it's not just v c fire hose money they have that too, and that is a market distortion and that is I understand why the studios and like f x and h b o are annoyed by this. I get that, but like Netflix itself when you say Netflix won't be around in ten years, I think you're just dead wrong I think you're dead wrong 
what I'm not saying is that it won't be around in 10 years. I'm saying that there is at least an even money chance that it won't. And if it exists, it will exist not as a giant juggernaut, but as a, a thing like HBO. Sure. We, we will see in episode 1000. <laughs> when we're still doing this. Sonny, <laughs> you remember when you said, uh, okay, we're doing good. Sonny, we're running, we're running long. We're we running long. Okay, we well, let's up. wrap it up. Thank you, JVL. Uh, really quickly, you were talking about market capitalization. It reminded me of mid-cap funds. And I got a great stock, uh, stock tip for you, Sonny, a bunch of mid-cap fund. You know where I learned it from? Elevator News. Oh, good. Mid-cap good. fund. Good. I don't even know what that is, but mid- <laughs> mid-cap fund. Okay. All uh, my money is in it now, so it better I, be good. I put it in there because of the elevator. Uh, that's all the time we're giving to this episode. Questions, comments, complaints, compliments. Tweet us at Victorino Mattis at Sunny Bunch. At JB Last. Again, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. Just type in Sub Beacon under podcasts. We're there. Leave a review. Tell your friends. Until next time. So, uh, listener Bill Jolly sent me this link to uh, news about gout in England. It's up like 153% in the last eight years, if you can believe it, or last seven years. Uh, and so it's like it's gone from... Uh, uh, what do we have here? 65,000 recorded cases of the disease to 166,000 last year for whatever reason. And then, speaking of England, uh, Paul Cruxton, our colleague, was telling me I need to see the favorite. Yeah, because it, it's gout. It's got gout. We mentioned this on the show already. But are we going to? I, you've seen this. You've seen the favorite. Uh, yeah, I've we seen it. Discuss, did I've you like it. it? Is it worth discussing? I mean, uh, we could discuss it. I was like, I lesbians no and gout? Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's. It, I assume we're going to do glass next week. Okay, fine. Because I was thinking if we can do, we can, we can also do just a tie-in of other movies besides the favorite. We could do the favorite, Bound, Mulholland Drive, uh, Bend It Like Beckham, you know. <laughs> Uh, as I have uh, movies that are fun and interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that would be fun. <laughs>